Ever wonder why men and women are so different? Could it be more than just culture and upbringing? Dive into the world of biology and you'll find fascinating differences that set men and women apart. It all starts with the very building blocks of our bodies, the cells. You see, women typically carry two X chromosomes, while men carry an X and a Y. This fundamental difference alone influences how our bodies develop and function. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Let's consider brain structure. Both men and women have the same basic brain regions, but there are subtle differences in how these regions connect and interact. For instance, women tend to have more connections across the two hemispheres of the brain, while men have more connections within each hemisphere. This might contribute to why men and women can approach problem solving or multitasking differently. Moving along to hormones, the chemical messengers of our bodies, men have higher levels of testosterone, which is linked to muscle mass and aggression, while women have higher levels of estrogen and progesterone, hormones that play crucial roles in reproduction and can also affect mood and cognition. And then there's body composition. Men generally have more muscle mass and a higher metabolic rate, which can lead to greater physical strength. Women, on the other hand, have a higher proportion of body fat, which supports childbirth and breastfeeding. This body composition difference also means that men and women can have different susceptibilities to certain diseases. For instance, men are often more prone to heart disease, while women are more susceptible to autoimmune disorders. Not to mention, how we process medications can also differ, leading to variations in treatment responses. These biological differences are fascinating, aren't they? They can help explain why men and women might experience the world in unique ways. But before you jump to conclusions, remember, these are general trends, not hard and fast rules. There's a lot of individual variation and overlap. So, biology offers us some clues, but it's not the entire story. Let's delve a bit deeper. Beyond biology, men and women differ in their psychological makeup. But how exactly? Let's delve deeper into this fascinating topic. Firstly, research suggests that men tend to be more system-oriented. They excel at tasks requiring strategic thinking and problem-solving, often using a logical step-by-step -step approach. This could be the reason why we see a higher representation of men in fields such as engineering and mathematics, where systematic thinking is essential. On the other hand, women tend to be more empathetic, often excelling in roles that require understanding and managing emotions. They are generally more adept at reading emotional cues and responding to them effectively. This emotional intelligence can make women excellent leaders, caregivers and communicators, but how do these psychological differences play out in everyday life? Let's consider communication. Men typically use communication as a means to an end, focusing on conveying information, solving problems or achieving goals. Women, however, often view communication as an end in itself, using it to build relationships and connect emotionally. Problem-solving approaches also differ between the sexes. Men often adopt a fix-it mentality, focusing on finding solutions. Women, meanwhile, may focus more on understanding the emotional aspects of a problem and empathizing with those affected by it. Emotional processing is another area where men and women differ. Women typically process emotions more quickly and are more likely to express them, while men may take longer to process their feelings and be less likely to show them. These psychological differences give us more insight into the unique ways men and women navigate the world. However, it's important to remember that these are general trends and not absolute truths. It's also crucial to note that these differences don't make one sex superior to the other. Instead, they complement each other, creating a rich tapestry of human experience. So let's celebrate these differences, for they make us who we are, unique and diverse. We've explored biological and psychological differences, but how does society factor into this equation? Let's delve into the societal norms and expectations that shape the behaviors and attitudes of men and women. Imagine society as an enormous stage where we are all performers. The script we follow, more often than not, is dictated by societal norms, which in turn have a profound influence on our behaviors and attitudes. Consider the concept of gender roles. These are essentially societal expectations of how men and women should behave. For instance, some societies expect men to be strong, unemotional and competitive, while women are often expected to be nurturing, empathetic and cooperative. 
These expectations, although traditional, can have a significant impact on our actions and the way we perceive ourselves. Now let's talk about how these gender roles can reinforce certain behaviors. Say, for example, a boy is constantly told that boys don't cry. Over time, he learns to suppress his emotions, embodying the societal expectation of men being unemotional. Similarly, a girl who is repeatedly encouraged to be nurturing and caring might grow up to be more empathetic and compassionate. But here's the crucial bit. These societal norms and gender roles are not rigid. They are fluid and constantly evolving. As societies progress, these expectations can change, and with them, so do our behaviors and attitudes. For instance, the notion that women should only be caregivers and men should be breadwinners is gradually being challenged and redefined in many societies around the world. We can't talk about societal influence without mentioning the media. The media, in all its forms, plays a pivotal role in shaping societal norms and expectations. It often reinforces gender stereotypes, but it also has the power to challenge and change them. And so society does play a significant role in shaping our behaviors and attitudes, but remember, these are not set in stone and can change over time. It's important to recognize this influence, but also to question and challenge it, and ultimately, to define our own roles. Biology, psychology and society all contribute to the differences between men and women, but how do they interact? When we delve into the intricacies of human behavior, we find that these three elements, biology, psychology and society, are not individual actors on an empty stage. Instead, they are intertwined in a dynamic dance, each influencing and being influenced by the others. Let's start with biology. Our biological makeup, including our genetics and hormones, can shape our behaviors and attitudes. For instance, the presence of testosterone might lead to more aggressive behavior. However, this relationship isn't set in stone. Our psychological state can also influence our biology. Stress, for example, can alter hormone levels, leading to changes in behavior. Next, we have psychology, the study of the mind and behavior. Our thoughts and feelings can shape our perceptions and actions. But psychology doesn't exist in a vacuum. It is influenced by our biology and our social environment. For example, societal expectations can shape our perceptions of ourselves, influencing our thoughts and behaviors. Finally, we come to society. Society's norms and expectations play a significant role in shaping our behaviors. But it's important to remember that society is also shaped by us. Our biological and psychological differences can influence societal norms and expectations. For instance, the biological differences between men and women have led to certain societal expectations about gender roles. You see, it's a complex interplay. Biology influences psychology, which is shaped by society, which in turn is influenced by our biology and psychology. It's a never-ending cycle, a continuous feedback loop. And while it can be challenging to untangle, it's this intricate web that makes us uniquely human. So when we look at the differences between men and women, it's not just about biology or psychology or society. It's about all three working together, influencing each other, creating the rich and varied tapestry of human behavior. Understanding the interplay of these factors helps us understand the complex tapestry of human behavior. So are men and women really that different? The answer is both yes and no. We've journeyed through the realms of biology and psychology and have delved into the societal influences that shape who we are. We've seen that there are indeed biological differences between men and women, from chromosomal variances to physical attributes. Men typically have a higher muscle mass, while women generally have a higher percentage of body fat. But let's not forget that there's a wide range of individual variation even within these general trends. Psychologically, we've looked at how men and women differ in areas such as communication, emotional expression, and cognitive abilities. Women tend to be more verbally expressive, while men are often more physically expressive. However, it's critical to remember that these differences are not absolute. Their average is taken from large groups, and individual variation can be substantial. Society, with its norms and expectations, also plays a significant role in shaping these differences. We've seen how societal pressures can influence the roles, behaviors, and expectations of both men and women. It's not just biology or psychology. It's a complex interplay of all these factors that shape who we are. The interplay of biology, psychology, and society is a fascinating dance that creates the diverse tapestry of human expression.
It's important to remember that while there are differences between men and women, there's also a great deal of overlap. We're not just a product of our biology or psychology, we're also a product of our experiences, our environments, and our choices. In conclusion, yes, men and women are different in certain aspects, but they're also remarkably similar in many others. There's a broad spectrum of individuality that runs through humanity, and each of us falls somewhere along that spectrum. Remember, while understanding these differences can be helpful, it's also important to appreciate the individuality of each person. After all, we're all wonderfully unique in our own ways.